If you're serious about playing the trombone, or any instrument for that matter, you better get serious about singing. I think the reason why other, some players are successful and other players are not, is for that simple reason, is that the successful ones are committed to singing on the instrument all the time. In this video, I'm going to share with you six essential tips to help you develop your best singing sound at the trombone. You have to keep singing from here. You know, every, every time you pick up the horn, it can be... I've already made a separate video about how a lot of the greatest teachers and players on this planet that I have also studied with, players like Ben van Dijk, Joe Alessi, they all have one thing in common in general, and they all loved listening to singers. They always sang in their lessons, and there's no coincidence. So you may be thinking, I only wanna play the trombone. What's he going on about singing? But if you found this video, you may have looked for the search term, how to get a singing tone. Maybe that's your aim, I hope it's your aim. Why is it so essential? Well, what are we listening for? What do we wanna listen for in a trombone player? Do we wanna hear a trombone player, great trombone player, or do we want to hear a great musician? I would strongly argue that the broad majority wants to hear a great musician. Trombone makes a great sound, but if there's no singer behind it, then it's very limited what you're able to actually produce in terms of singing your story, uh, telling a story. So I think, I think right now it it's, sounds like the trombone. So you may be thinking, I'm here for the trombone and not the singing. I understand that. But I can tell you, I've studied with some of the absolute greatest masters at the trombone, and they all had one thing in com common. They were all into singing in a big way. They would sing in the lessons loudly. And they could reference a load of great singing, favorite singers, had a huge collection back then of CDs of their favorite singers. And you need to do the same. Let me ask you this. Are we really listening for a great trombone player or are we listening for a great musician? I would argue the latter, especially as soon as we get out of our trombone bubble. The greater majority of the audience doesn't really care what you're holding in your hands that they're looking for a story in sound. And the easiest way to get to this is through your human voice. It's your unique selling point, you could say. In terms of having a competitive edge, this is one of the best things you can work on because nobody else has your singing voice or your singing style. So if you connect with that and bring it through the trombone, you will be playing in a way that is completely unique and that's where it gets interesting. Every human being has a completely unique makeup, including the way we may sing a phrase. Project that through the trombone and you're onto something special. If you've put the right kind of information, beautiful musical sounds into your ear in the first place. And that's what we're gonna discuss now. So this is normally the part of the video where I beg and beg for you to subscribe to this channel. But as you're probably a beautiful, awesome trombone player, I guess you've already done that, right? Go for it. I'll make better videos the more subscribers there are. So tip one, it's kind of obvious, but sing it. <laughs> Actually physically sing what you're currently working at on the trombone. We're not after a beautiful singing tone here. I'm not a vocal teacher, although I have had vocal lessons and I sing, sing regularly in choirs, but we're after the storytelling element of the singing, the art of singing. Record yourself singing. Let's take the tune Danny Boy. I'll sing two versions. La 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 that was kind of energy level 50% relaxed. Now I'll go on 120% in terms of energy. Probably a bit ridiculous. La 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 I really enjoyed that actually. Um, did it seem ridiculous? Which version was better? I could, I guess I could have um, 
<laughs> could have overdone it even more, but I would say the second version had more soul. And normally then somewhere in between is is a tasteful version. Maybe you saw I moved around a little bit. I used to get criticized for this at the trombone. I used to do it maybe too much. Some teachers would say, stand still. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. Look at a lot of singers and they'll do a lot of these these vocal gestures, these moving gestures while they sing. It, if it helps you to emote, to tell that story better, then feel free to move around. It may actually help you. As a natural progression of singing your trombone material, I would highly recommend you actually join a local choir. If you're a male, and that's quite likely on this channel, according to the statistics, ladies, you're more than welcome though. As a male, you're severely in demand in any choir. They're always understaffed, as it were, and you learn so much about the art of singing. So tip two is now connecting to the trombone. Often we pick, pick up that piece of metal and we forget to turn on that singing voice. Song and Wind, Arnold Jacobs, project the singing voice. That was his whole point, right? That's why he's such a great pedagogue. Um, we pick this up, we forget to keep the mind singing loudly. I've got a few exercises to help you with that. There's a great guy called David Vining. He's got a whole book which uses this system. And check out this, for example, the Ode to Joy PDF I've got for you. This shows the notes, but in a normal way and also in a way to actually sing while pulling the slide, moving the slide. Da, 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 dee, dee, da, da, da. I call it the sing bone. You can check it out in my free Gordon Sound Masterclass, which is linked below. It's in the third video called Song Workouts. But you can do this for any tune. Just simply choose moments. You can do it for the whole tune or even better, and this is thanks David Vining, certain bars you switch from playing to singing. For example, and so on and so forth. This bridges that wonderful connection between your inner singing voice and this hunk of metal we love to blow through. Okay, if you listen to Frank Sinatra, if you listen to Natalie Cole, <laughs> then you listen to uh, Dean Martin. Dean Martin? No kidding. What do you have? What recordings do you have of Dean Martin? <laughs> Alright, well the point is, you have to listen to more singers to find out what they do with phrasing. That's, you have to get inspired by that. So that little clip of Joe Alessi exposing, you could say, a student back in Amsterdam 2013, it was a masterclass I was at live and filmed as it happens, um, that really stuck with me. He asks all about singers, right? And the student hasn't heard of any of them or doesn't actively listen to them until it came to, I think, Dean Martin, right? All these greats, Frank Sinatra, Pavarotti, they're essential. How can you possibly tell a good musical story if you don't have a strong model? Imagine this. Imagine a jazz musician. Imagine a Louis Armstrong. Imagine them without having listened to thousands of hours of jazz music. It's simply impossible. I would beg to differ that anybody can list a great jazz musician who hasn't studied other jazz records live or recorded for thousands of hours. It's so unlikely. It's a language in itself, just as music is a language. So here's a few concrete tips of musicians, first singers and recordings that have inspired me and hopefully can inspire you get into the art of singing more deeply. Number one, Luciano Pavarotti singing Ness and Dorma. There's several recordings. The studio recording is incredible. And also check out Live in Rome with the Three Tenors. It's 1990 around that time. It's on YouTube. If that emotional expression from him doesn't move you, then I think you're in the wrong place. As it happens, the Joe Alessi album I'm about to mention, when I met Joe some years ago, I asked him what his model was for the Ness and Dorma, and the first name he mentioned was Pavarotti. So you see there, the bridge is quite strong. Recommendation two, 
Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, a German baritone, singing the song cycle by Schumann Dichterliebe with Jörg Demus on piano. He can sing a little harsh, a little too loud sometimes, but in, again, in terms of emotion, it's incredible. And also phrasing. By phrasing, I mean how he, where he moves to, where the direction of the musical line is. He nudges, he leans into so many notes, also linked to the text. It's such a beautiful display of color that you can learn so much by singing along with him and even, you know, you can download the whole song cycle for free and play along. Third tip, Frank Sinatra singing My Way. It's just incredible. Again, his phrasing, you'll hear so many musicians reference his sense of phrasing. It can't be described too well. Listen to it and again, try to play along. As it happens, I've got a play along here that I recently did of My Way. I was thinking, what about the ladies? I do listen to a lot of ladies as well. Um, probably because I'm male, the, the male singers stick with me more. But there is one recording, Time to Say Goodbye, Andrea Bocelli and Sarah Brightman, which is pretty damn interesting. I know not everyone's a fan of particularly her vocal style, but check it out because you hear the same notes, the same music interpreted by two different artists. It's very different. I would argue that Bocelli phrases a lot stronger than Brightman. He leans into the, the notes more deeply. Ultimately, it's a matter of taste, how much you're going to overdo it. But check it out and listen to how they approach these, uh, these great phrases. Mr. Joe Alessi, Return to Sorrento, my favorite CD of his, definitely one of my top three trombone CDs ever, I'd argue. It's just... It's Italian songs. There's opera songs, a lot by Puccini, Ness and Dorma, I've already mentioned, Mbeldi on alto. And what I want to talk about now is O Mio Babino Cardo from Madame Butterfly by Puccino. <laughs> That's right, Al Puccino. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely by Puccini, not Puccino. And uh, for example, let's take one phrase that you can learn as well. It's in C major. So I learned that tune from Return to Serena from Joe Alessi. He most likely learned it from some great opera singer, Maria Callas, perhaps. Did you hear the phrasing I tried to show there, particularly the octave leap, in this case, F to F? Da, da, di, do, di, do. He, I, great singers, they will use these leaps to increase the intensity of the music of the phrase to increase the tension remember music is all about tension and release so an octave leap has a huge amount of emotional intensity we could play it very flat da da di da di da but the great artists they will it's like pulling an elastic band da di da tickling out that leap till the last possible minute also called rubato that's more of a timing thing the combination is what we call musical phrasing as you can tell it's such a complicated thing to explain i want you to listen to get that information in your ear and then copy it at the trombone it will make you sound more musical <laughs> Beauty, the final tip of the studying list is Mr. Ben van Dyke. Now, unfortunately, this CD can't be found on streaming. Maybe you can write him an email. Maybe he has a few copies you can still, still uh, buy on CD. It's incredible. Ben is one of my favorite players anyway. And the reason is the warm sound and the singing lyrical quality. I've been to his house a few times for a lesson. I remember his, uh, he, he had the attic room was his study and it was filled in the on the diagonal roof with CDs and there's probably 50 of those are probably singers. He would sing in every lesson 
I've talked about this in other videos. Singing was very important to him, and you can hear it. He talks about his father, who was a professional trombonist as well. Singing had a very singing lyrical sound. It's in his DNA, in his in his family's DNA, you could say. But he studied the sound too. And on that CD, for example, there's a beautiful song, Vivaldi's Winter from the Four Seasons, um, which I'll play again a small clip of, starting on a low F. It's so lyrical, it's so warm how he plays it. Again, I've learned this note for note, for note off his recording and it certainly helped my sound and my, my phrasing as well. So check out Ben van Dyke Melody and Winter. <laughs> So tip four, vibrato, vibrato, vibrato. You know what I'm saying? That wonderful wobble. <laughs> I'll give you my story about this. Um, I was very insecure about trombone vibrato because I had no idea how it was done except for with the slide. There's three types. There's slide, there's lip vibrato, and there's diaphragm vibrato. I went to Canada for a year, studied with the great Douglas Burden in the University of Ottawa. He was the only trombonist I've ever met who used a diaphragm vibrato. I was not able to copy that. It sounded like a strange kind of goat sound <laughs> um, until I realized at some point, hey, he's unique. Um, I would argue most players are doing a combination of lip and slide. In fact, that's what I recommend to you to begin with. Vibrato is very personal, so it's a kind of magical tool, again, that helps with your unique selling point at the trombone. How to work on it? Well, I'll tell you what we did. We started very dry with a metronome, a single, a single tone. Let's say quarter is about 80 then utilize the vibrato, let's say in eighth notes, then in triple eighth notes, then in 16th notes with a metronome, for example. Okay, so you'll probably say, hey, that's pretty robotic. That's just the mechanics of it, right? Just to get your lips used to this kind of feeling and to increase vibrato speed now that's the thing where it's so unique to you as a player or where, to everybody as a trombone player michelle becquet uh, pretty fast vibrato tommy dorsey ridiculously fast slide vibrato um, players like ben van dyke somewhat slower and wider you know there's a general kind of rule the lower you go the wider and the slower the vibrato gets, again, listen to the singers. You'll hear it in their voices. You know, listen to, let's say, Maria Callas singing really high. Those really high tones will have a, a fairly narrow but fast vibrato in general, let's say, in a romantic opera. Whereas the uh, Fischer Disco, Im leuchtenden Sommermorgen. Ah, that was fun. It's a wider and slower vibrato. From there, let's get more musical work on the vibrato in the context of pieces, right? So, so now you want to focus on notes which maybe are longer or they're goal notes. For example, Danny Boy, London area, yeah, that high leap, da, 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 dee. I just did a nice play along for that too. The high G is a wonderful example to give a bit of warmth, vibrato warmth. And I am a big fan of, for example, Joe Alessi. If you watch him on videos, although he's so supposedly a classical player, he was one of the first classical players that I saw using a very clear slide vibrato. Some lips too, but sometimes very blatant slide vibrato. And you know what? It sounds amazing. So don't let anybody tell you it's not appropriate for classical music. Maybe not for many orchestral pieces, but in terms of solos, there's plenty of opportunities to uh, utilize a slide vibrato as long as it's tasteful, right? And that's where we need to study taste, taste from singing examples. So vibrato is that emotional secret weapon. You will want to utilize that if you're interested in getting a more singing tone at the trombone. 
So tip five, which was a massive game changer for me when I switched to jazz music, is transposing melodies through all keys by ear. This will force you to turn on that singing voice more intensively. Start really simple if you're new at this. Ode to Joy I just mentioned earlier. That's one of the simplest ones. Just take a few bars, go through several keys. I'd say go through at least five keys, either chromatically or through the cycle of fifths, or just through the keys that you know, B flat major, E flat, C, D major, G major perhaps. And by the time you've gone through five keys, you will, you will realize or notice that you are singing. It won't work if you're not singing from within. When I started doing this more intensively in my jazz studies, I first of all, I got rid of some of the injury prob problems I was having, tension issues, technical things, technical issues just vanished, etc. So this is also a kind of secret weapon of trombone technique and playing, and of course, highly increases your singing sound. So you may have been looking for more technical aspects. Sorry, I haven't really addressed those. I didn't intend to. This is about the art of singing and singing style, taste, etc. Studying recordings. There's plenty of other videos talking about technique. But I will say the following thing are three things addressed. Good open posture. Relaxed open breathing. And an embouchure setup that isn't pressing too hard. If those things aren't working, you're going to sound tense. If you've got a good embouchure setup so you're not pressing too hard, you might say those are three absolute basics which we need to take care of. I do have a course um, addressing all of these things called Bone Basics for complete beginners, for more advanced players looking to hone their technique, get a better technique. Also for people interested in playing more by ear, I take you through all those things in very careful steps. Bone Basics, link below. Comment below which singers have impressed you the most. I'm always interested to hear, to learn more, to hear more singers. Comment if this has helped you, how it's helped you. Are you working with these kind of recordings? What are your struggles in this area? We'd love to hear from you. Good luck getting that greatest singing sound. See you in the next video. It can be, it can be as any <clears throat> melody that you want, but you have to sing. <laughs> serious about it and they, they, they they're more interested in the instrument than they are in music okay, oh this instrument wow I play the trombone and all that but it's the, the, the other ones the ones that they, they, they surpass the instrument and they they're they, 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 they are constantly working on singing all the time like a voice like a voice so if you believe in that when you play this you're going to think like a singer and somewhat slower vibra vibrato.